So let me introduce you to Elmar, a young Icelandic boy, 14 years old, who lives in France. He left Iceland when he was four and a half, three and a half. Uh, no, I was actually uh, three and a half. Uh, I was two, but going to be three. Right, very precise. And uh, in Paris, there's an amazing school similar to the beautiful schools in Iceland called the Living School. And Clementine actually did um, uh, an internship over there, two internships. And the, the director of the school was supposed to come, but for good reasons, because the school is expanding in Paris, she couldn't be here. But she said, we have a special young boy. So to finish this moment of sharing before we go into discussion, we would like you to have this testimonial of what it's like to be 14 and to have the opportunity to learn everything you've been hearing about. Thank you, Ilma. Thank you. Thank you. No, oh, this is good. So, hello. Like uh, Mark said, I'm Elmar. And today, I'm going to talk to you about education. In education, there is a you. For me, this you tells us that you can, that you, will, that you are able to learn and do anything that you want. So now, let me begin of the story of a little boy who was led to believe the opposite, that no, he couldn't. This little boy is inventive and full of energy. In school, he likes to ask questions like, how do you make permanent markers and what are clouds made of? But only to be told to not ask silly questions and to be serious, this is school. This little boy, like I said, is inventive and he likes to invent stories at home. He even puts them on stage. But this making up things at school is frowned upon. And he's also eager to share his knowledge with the teacher and the class, but only to be told that he is disturbing and then sent a to a corner, his face on the wall in order to not to move. This boy is not so curious and inventive anymore. His energy and passion have been crushed. And he thinks that yes, he is just a silly boy and he'll never be able to learn anything, not to read, even less write. And he doesn't want to go to school ever. His mom is heartbroken to see that every morning while going to school, he is begging her and he is crying every day to not go to school. And his dad is miserable that every time that he hears from the teacher, the teacher tells him that his son is misbehaving and failing school at only the age of five. As you may have guessed, this is my story. At only the age of five, I was convinced that I was no good and I was able to learn nothing. But I was lucky. My parents did not agree with the sentence that I was giving by the school. They tried to find a way where I could be happy and flourished at the same time. And that's when we got to meet Living School and Caroline Sotst. And I'm going to let Caroline introduce herself through me. Former director of the Human Resources, I always been searching for a deeper meaning in my professional life. In 2003, I decided to begin my master's degree in, in development of ethical leadership. It was during this program that Living School was born. I wanted to create innovative schools where children would become actors in a fairer and better world. Children would create today and tomorrow a little less suffering and a little more happiness in this world. L Living School is a bilingual, private, innovative preschool and primary school. At Living School, not only the children, but also their parents and the staff learn how they can become fulfilled citizens. Convinced that the world change begins with one person, Living School has chosen life being, savoir être, as the school based of pedagogy. To know how to to have confidence in yourself, to know how to assert yourself, 
to have good relationship with others, these are the skills that allows you to succeed in life. Savoir être. The teachers are specially trained to blossom the true happiness and confidence in every child. And also, Living School offers a curriculum in eco-citizenship. Each year, the children are encouraged to act now, to act now on projects through they lead their self. And each year, they choose and carry out projects for the planet responding to today's issues. Here are some examples. Seven children were saved from hunger. 21 pandas were adopted. Three bonobos were sponsored. 722 trees replanted in Casamance, Senegal. Nights in a hotel for the homeless men of the neighborhood. And finally, a tree planted in the Butchemont Park to support Chief Raoni. To name only the few actions that were led by us kids at living school. Joy and pleasure are the most powerful driven force behind learning. Living school offers inspiring pedagogical activities engage children who want to learn without constraint or pressure. Or as we say, ce que je fais avec plaisir, je le fais bien. What I do with a happy heart, I do it well. Instead of focusing on limitation and weakness, living school believes in the children's immense potential, and each child celebrates his or her successes, successes each week in the successes in the success notebook. So when I started living school in Sepe, which is the equivalent of first grade, I was insecure. I was always having the bad memories of my last school. And I was easily angry. But by my second week there, I already started to feel happy and like I was home. In living school, we start the day with what we call an éveil corporel, the body wake up. We would light up a candle, put some calm and relaxing music and then do body movements and stretches. We will do neck, feet, elbow. It's perfect to make you calm and alerted for a day of learning. And one of the first things that my teachers at living school taught me that I have a inner treasure. My inner treasure is my immense potential and my unique personality. They taught me that I have the capacity to imagine whatever I want and to learn whatever I wanted. And they showed me how, could, how I could share my successes. At living school, everyone has his success notebook, where each week I would write and draw what I had achieved and then put them on there. So here, I'm explaining that I did my own Lego movie in stop motion. And here, I did my own crumble. But sometimes, if I, if I was feeling angry or frustrated, I could ask the teacher to go out of the class and go hit the punching bowl. That way, I would let out all my negative feelings in time to recenter myself and then go back into the class, learn happily and calm. In living school, every kid is assigned a buddy. The concept is that big kids go and help the little ones. Like while going to the park, we would help them dress, dressed, put their shoes on, take their hand on the way, and have a nice conversation with them. One day during an outing in the woods with, uh, with, with Nicolas Metro, he was telling us that we human have an effect on our, on our environment. And he was explaining us 
how the forest plays in our everyday life. And he was also explaining deforestation. And he said that we, would, that we could make a difference when we go up. Thibault, who was one of my classmates, whose confidence said, when we grow up, but why wait? Can't we do something right away? And then began a great adventure. We would have meetings at school and sometimes with Nicola. Nicola guided us to find places where help was needed. And with the school, we would try to find ways how we could fund for these actions. And the results were making of holiday season greeting cards for, for the parents. And thanks to this, we got to do, we got to replant 722 trees in Casamance, Senegal. And thanks to these actions, we got to make pen pals with the kids there. And we would learn about their everyday life, and we would learn about ours. So, me, us wanting to do something good for our planet made use of our writing, reading, drawing, history, geography, and art lessons. And I was happy at it shown. I had grown confident and happy. Sometimes my mom had to, had to run after me because I was so excited to go to school and to see my teachers and my friends. And then I started to know that I did great things. And here I am, proud of what I achieved because I wrote my own poem. And I was reading fluently. It was even one of my favorite things to do when I had spare time and when I had finished my work early, I would go to the kindergarten and I would, and I would read them a book. I was again curious and eager to ask questions and to answer. And with the help of my teacher, I learned how I could channel this energy and to use a good way to use it. During my four years at living school, I really got to understand the value of positive life skills and the importance that my behavior can have on each and every one of us. And that I have my inner treasure and I should always cherish and keep it safe. Caroline often uses the example of a tea bag for this. When you dip the tea bag into the water, the color and the flavor will change. Well, for us, it's actually the same thing. A teacher acting grumpy, sad, will make a class of bored students. But a happy teacher with good life skills will want kids to learn more. And those kids will go out in the world, do new things, and then they will be happy. And this is even one of my favorite pictures that we took there. I left living school with some of my answers and a ton of new skills, both life skills and academic, like my fluent English, for an example. But I mostly left living school knowing what I love today and what I want to do. But not just what I want to do when I'll grow up, but what I want to do right now. And right now, I want you, you who are here today, you, parents, grandparents, schoolmasters, ministers, you, you who have the power to change tomorrow's education. So you can make children, everyone, boy or girl, rich and poor, go to a school where they could be happy and flourished, so they can learn in a joyful way, in a yet stress-free environment. Because you can. Thank you.